in case four, so what we are going to discuss is, so what is here, let me check here. Case four is about tree string method. Two, tree string method. Case four is regarding the tree string method. Now, uh, in Java, uh, whenever we are printing the reference variable internally, we are calling the two string method. So this is the point that you have to remember. In Java, when we, uh, whenever we are printing the reference variable internally, uh, reference variable internally, we are calling the two string method. So in the previous examples here, when we are printing this reference variable S1, internally so let's just try to remove this code and show you clearly let's see we have object string s1 okay and we are trying to print this <coughs> Dot out of print ln. And we are trying to print S1. Okay. Now let's check the output. Okay, let's check the output. What's the output? Who is got? So let's try with string new. We have to initialize. It's just a simple example, just to show this um, calling of the tree string method. So, that she is being printed. Now, how it is happening is I'm going to explain you here. So whenever uh, you are doing this, so let me uh, write another statement. So when we are doing, whenever we are doing this, uh, I mean, whenever we are trying to print this S1 reference variable, so it is internally calling the true string. It's internally calling the true string method. Okay, let me check. So the output for this and this will be same. Let's just check it here. So Tashi Tashi is being printed. Now the conclusion from here is that, so here, what is happening is when you are executing this statement, what is happening is this will internally call the tree string method. This will internally call the tree string method, which is present in the string class. So if we check here, if we check here, so this is the string class. It is inbuilt Java string class. Now if we just find tree string class here.
you just try to find it here. So here we can see this true string class is present in the string to Java. That is in the string class. It is present in the string class. So the point here is that here. So when you are trying to print this S1 internally, this will internally call the tree string method, which is present in the string uh, string class. And here it will also happen the same. For this, uh, for this we are using uh, unlike this one, so this will internally call without our notice. So, but for this, if we are trying to call true string method, uh, first of all, it will check whether this true string method is present in this class test or not. It will check whether this true string is present in this class or not. First, it will check. Then only, if this true string is not present in this test class, then only it will call the tree string method, which is present in the string class. Okay, so this is the difference that you have to remember. So when you are doing this, uh, when you are doing this, uh, <clears throat> internally it is calling the tree string method, whereas for this, it will first check whether tree string method is present uh, uh, in the test class or not. Then only, if it is not present in the test class, then only it will uh, call the tree string method which is present in the string class. Okay. Now, let me uh, discuss another example, another simple example. So this is a very simple example. So just let's say we have a student class, student -E student class. And let's say um, we have, uh, let's say we have uh, um, int, int is ID, student ID, then string, string, uh, is name. Okay. And let's say we have constructor, is and student constructor, and this student constructor is accepting two parameter, let's say SID and string name so let's try to make these local variables so these are the local variables right we have already discussed so let's try to make it global how we make this local variables global is we make this dot sid is equal to sid is dot s name equal to s name so this is how we are making these local variables global so this is the instance variable and this is the local variable. <clears throat> now, let's just uh, remove this, it's not really good. No. Now let's uh, create the student object. Student uh, std is equal to new stu and student. Now this student, we have a constructor. So this is the constructor and we have two parameters here. So we have to pass the parameter, uh, we have to pass the values. Let's say we create uh, two zero. So this is the student ID and let's say we have student ID and let's say uh, we have the student, this is student name. We have the student name is um, Tashi. Okay, now let's try to print those, print the, print those values. That is S ID and S name. So we have S T D and again let's try to do same as the before. That is S T D dot two string. So in the previous examples we have just we have just practiced with this approach. So we have done that because uh, this is not mandatory to do, that is uh, not mandatory to call the true string method. Internally, this will be called by the JVM, okay? So these two statements are 
same. So it will perform the same operation. Whether you call this true string or not, it will perform the same operation. So this is, I'm declaring here, I'm, I mean, I'm calling this true string method here just to uh, show the behavior of this true string, how it is called internally. Okay. Now let's uh, try to execute this. So just guess the output, whether it will print 2820 or trashy. So just guess the output. So let's try to compile this, okay. So let's try to compile this uh, here. Mm -hmm. Java C, we have file sds.java. Now we have Java and you have class name student. So see here, we have a different output. So just copy this. And you wanted to analyze this output. So what happens is when we are trying to print these values, we are given with a different output that is student at the rate. Now what happens is, uh, what happened here is that, uh, what happened here is that, so this is the class name at the rate, this is the hash code. Now hash code printed, hash code is being printed for this example. Now our objective is to print 2820 and dashi. But we are given with this output. Now why we are given with this output, I'm going to show it here, okay? <clears throat> now, when you are trying to print the object reference variable, so this true string is calling the this true string is calling from the object. So this is the inbuilt class, it is object. So I have in the previous lessons, I have told you that a root class of all the classes in Java is the object. So this object, object class do not have the parent class. And I've told you that all the classes in Java, the root class is the object class. This is the parent class of all the object class. Now, if you see here, inside the object class, we have two string method. Now, what happens is here, when we are trying to print this std here, internally, it is calling the true string method of the object class here. So therefore, what it will do is, what this true string method in the object returns is it will, it will return the class name. Here we have a get name here, get class dot get class name, at the rate, and then integer, that is hexadecimal, some values is being printed. So same is here that if we check this output, we can see it is the student, it's the class name. Here we have, uh, here we have, here, uh, here, here we have the, first we have the class name, then it is printing the at the rate, and then some number is letting to print. So therefore, here, class name at the rate, some hexade uh, hexadecimal number is being printed when we are trying to print the reference variable of the object. So this true string is internally calling the true string method of the object class. So that's why it is printing the student at the rate, some hexadecimal number. Now, you might be wondering what are those hexadecimal numbers? Now those numbers are nothing. So I've just related a simple example. So, so just here we have a SID. Now in the school, different students will be having different SID. Okay, so it is now with the help of this SID. So you are able to uniquely identify the students. Now same applies to these objects. So when you are creating different objects in Java file. So these objects need to be verified uniquely. So therefore, JVM will assign unique hexadecimal number for this object. So that's why it's a hexadecimal number. It is very similar to that of the student ID and all, include ID, similar to that. So just to identify the objects uh, uniquely, 
So they're assigned with a unique hexadecimal number. Okay. Now we have a problem. So this, so we want the data to be printed here, but we are printed with a default value that is student uh, the rate some hexadecimal number. So is not required. Now what we have to do is that in order to, so the ways that we can print our real data, the real world data. So we want the real world data in our application. So therefore, how we can get this real world data that is to it, to zero and trashy. Now, in order to do that, what we have to do is that we have to define a tree string method inside the student class. Now, how we will do is we just have to do this. We have just have to declare tree string method here. We utilize so let's say this string is public and let's say string string twisting twisting method twisting string. and what we are doing is so this string returns always returns a string so the da, 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 um, this twisting method at the time is <coughs> string so it returns string are you so uh, it returns, let's say, this ID, this ID, let's say, we want uh, SID to be printed, then we want um, S name. S name is plus S name. So, so this is we are trying to call the true string inside the student class. We are trying to declare the true string. So here the behavior is that when you are trying to print the reference variable std, what will happen is so I have to, told you already now so that uh, when you are trying to do this std or std to tree string first it will check whether the tree string method is present in the class or not within the class or not so first it will check whether this tree string is present in the class or not so if it is not present in this student it will call the object tree string class so where is here we have tree string class declared here so therefore this true string will be called and it will return the real world values. So let's just save this and let's try to compile and execute. Java. Compile successfully. Java. So we have class student. So here we are able to, something is wrong. We are, able to, we are printing null, let me check. It's not supposed to be null, it should be Tashi. So what went wrong? Genius ID. Let's try to fix this. I think I've uh, done some mistakes here.
get an incomplete object here. So, mm, Student class, STD, S name is I'm not sure why I'm getting null here. It should print trash here. So I'll come back to you on this uh, why it's printing null. Okay. So I'm not sure why it should print trash here. So we have. So just to show uh, this example is just to show uh, how we are uh, calling this true string into uh, when we are declaring the true string method inside the. Uh, uh, class uh, student class and then um, internally calling that tree string class to the object. Now, if we analyze this uh, output, let me see. So, if we print, if you just copy it here. So what it is trying to do is this, uh, uh, what it is trying to do here is uh, that when you are trying to call the tree string here, you're just calling the tree string uh, method which is present in the student. So it will not uh, call the uh, tree string uh, a method which is present in the uh, object and the uh, string class. So this just to show this, this case is, Now let me uh, do another example regarding this. Uh, let's just remove this. Uh, let's see, uh, we have a uh, string, string object, string s1 equal to Ashi. Now let's try to print S1. And let's see, we have, uh, let's say we have S1 dot true. So let's uh, we are creating string object s1 is equal to tashi and then let's try to create a string object string buffer is here in the string string buffer string buffer is p is equal to new i 
I think we have made some changes here. So it's giving it off. This. Let's uh, try to give the continuous. So now. And let's just try to print this. SPN. SP. This is the example in continuation with the previous example. Okay, for this true string. So uh, we are just want we just wanted to check uh, the behavior. Now let's just save this and try to compile and execute. Take care. We are calling the method. We have to put two brackets here. Let's see if just plus string plus. So here we are able to print tashi tashi sonam sonam. Let's analyze this here. Now what happens uh, here is this. Let's just copy this code uh, here in this board. This is regarding the case four. Now what happens uh, here is that when you are trying to do this s1 dot to string or s1 when you are trying to print this reference variable so which twist string method will be called when we do this is that it will call the twist string method of the string class okay now what is a twist string method this twist string method is present in the string and it is overridden from the object class so this is just information so this twist string method is uh, override from the object class in the string class. So when you are trying to call the true string method, so it will call the true string method of the string class. And then what it does, it does, it does the, uh, what it uh, print, it returns is that it returns the content of the reference variable. Now, unlike the previous example, when you are trying to print a reference variable for the object, and when you are trying to call the a uh, true string method of the object it is doing the uh, it is uh, returning the reference that is uh, the class name and the hash code now where is when you are trying to call the true string method of the string class which is uh, override from this uh, object class so when you are trying to call this true string of the true string so it will just print the or it will return the content of the reference variable here we are able to print tashi tashi and sonam sonam because we are uh, because uh, this tree string, the uh, string class tree string method is being executed. So same is for here. The uh, same happens for here that tree string, which is present in the uh, string buffer class, will be executed. I think uh, that's all with this uh, case four. Now, uh, for, from this. Uh, uh, case four that uh, uh, things that you have to understand is that uh, if the object class that is if object class tree string is executed so both the object and the string class contains the tree string now if object class tree string is executed then the output is class name plus hash code is printed so if uh, string class tree string is executed then content of the string is printed Okay, this is just the difference between the tree string, the behavior of the tree string, which is present in the object and the string class. So I think we are done with this case four. Now we have another case, that is case five. <clears throat> 